Our study in college algebra has brought us to Unit 3, Basics of Functions. In Section 3.1, we'll look at a general introduction to functions, beginning in Section 3.1.1 with the function definition. To understand what a function is, we will begin with the definition of a relation. A relation is any correspondence... between two sets. So, for example, let's consider the correspondence between the amount of credit hours you take as a college student and the amount of tuition that you pay. If we look at the number of credit hours, that's going to be our first set, and it's related to the tuition that you pay per semester. There is a correspondence between those two sets. We would call that a relation. Now, a function is a very special type of relation. A function is a relation, that is, it is a correspondence between two sets, but it has further restrictions. A relation in which every element of the first set corresponds to exactly one element of the second set. So let's look at an example of a function. Suppose that you go to the gas station to put gas in your car. Well, there's two values that you're thinking of. The first value is the number of gallons of gas that you put in your car. Number of gallons. And the second thing that you consider is how many dollars do you pay, right? What is the price in dollars? This is a function because every element of the first set has exactly one value in the second set. I'm not going to put a certain number of gallons in my car and be charged two different prices. There is one unique price that is charged for a specific number of gallons of gas that I put in my car. So I hope that the next time you go to the gas station, you think about functions. Now, we're talking about two sets. Both relations and functions have a first and a second set, and we have specific names for these sets. Those are domain and range. In section 3.1.2, we will define the domain and the range. The domain is the set of all values of the independent variable. The independent variable is generally represented by x, and we can think of this as the input to the function. This is the first set involved in either a function or a relation. The range is the set of all values of the dependent variable. Generally, we represent the dependent variable by y, and we can think of this as the output to the function. For example, if we come back up here to our previous examples and look at the example we were talking about for functions, the domain is going to be the number of gallons that I put in my car. The range is going to be the price. So for a specific number of gallons of gas that I put in my car, there is a corresponding and unique price that I pay for that number of gallons. So x, the number of gallons, is e independent. Y, the price that I pay, is dependent. What is it dependent on? The price that I pay at the pump is dependent on how many gallons of gas that I put in my car. So X is the independent variable or the input to the function. 
y is the dependent variable or the output of the function. Think about inputting gas into your car and outputting the dollars into the cash register, right? So let's look at some examples of functions. In this section, we're going to look at several different presentations of functions. Functions can be written as a set of ordered pairs, as you see in example A and B. They can be expressed as a mapping, as you see there in example C in the checkbox. But they can also be presented as a graph. And finally, they can be presented as equations. So we're going to be examining several different types or presentations of functions. In example one, our problem is to just determine if the following relation are functions, and then we will state the domain and range. So the relation is defined in example A as a set of ordered pairs. Ordered pairs means in order. So in the first set of parentheses, the first element is a value of the independent variable x, and the second element is a value of the dependent variable y. So I've got a set of ordered pairs. Now what we're going to do is rearrange the information and split this into a distinct set called the domain and a distinct set called the range. The domain is going to be the list of all x values used in this relation, or the set of all first components of each of those ordered pairs. So the domain consists of values negative 12, negative 10, and 8. Notice I'm using the curly braces there. That just indicates a set. The range then is going to be the set of all y values used in those ordered pairs or the second component of each ordered pair. So the range in this case contains values negative 1, 3, and 13. So we have listed the domain and the range. Let's determine if this is a function. So we examine does every unique input, negative 12, negative 10, and 8, have a unique y value. And in this case, yes, every x has exactly one y. So we would say, yes, this is a function. It is a relation and a more stringent description is that, yes, it, it is a function. Example B is another set of ordered pairs. The first component is x. The second component is y in each ordered pair. And we will group the x's together to form the domain. So the domain has values negative 1, pi, 8, and 0. The range, that's the set of all y values or second components, the first ordered pair has y equals 5. Notice the second ordered pair also has y equals 5. I don't need to repeat that in my list for the range, so I'll go on to the next ordered pair. The next y value is negative 7, and the final y value is 0. So that's the domain and the range in our relation. Now the question is, is this relation a function? Does every x have exactly one y? And if so, then it is a function. Now, your eyeballs probably are looking at these two ordered pairs right there because there's a repetition. This is, in fact, a function. Now, every x has to have one unique y. So I'm just going to consider the x value negative 1. Negative 1 pairs with 5. And for the rest of the ordered pairs, negative 1 is not matched up with any other y value. So we say the x value, negative 1, has a unique y value, 5. Now, looking at the x value pi, which is about 3.14, is pi paired with any other y value? The answer is no. It has a unique y value. It doesn't matter that that y value was already used over here pi has a unique y value. Therefore, this is a function. So just to make an observation here, the y value can repeat in a function. Okay, if the x value repeats, that would indicate that one x is paired with two different y's, and that would not be a function. So the y value can repeat in a function, but the x value cannot repeat. 
Let's look at the mapping. Again, the mapping is another way of presenting a function. To identify the domain and range in these mappings, the first set is the domain. So the domain contains values 2, 5, 7, and 9. And the second set is the range. The range contains values 1, 4, 6, and 10. The question is, is this a function? Does every domain value have exactly one y value? Yes, there is a unique one-to-one -one pairing, so this is a function. We could rewrite each of those as ordered pairs if we wish, wished. This contains the order pairs 2, 4, 5, 1, 7, 6, and 9, 10. So really, it's another type of presentation of a function. The last example there is another example of a mapping. The domain contains the values in that first set, 2, 15, and negative 7, and the range contains the values in the second set, 0, 4, 1, and 10. Is this a function? What do you think? Did you say no? You should have said, no, this is not a function. The reason is because x equals 2 pairs to two different y values. Remember, every x has to have one unique y. If I were to list this as a set of ordered pairs, the first ordered pair would be 2, 0, the second would be 4, then we'd have 15, 1, and negative 7, 10. So notice the x value repeats. That is 1x, x equals 2, has two different y values. Therefore, it is not a function. Now, we will look at another perspective on how to determine if something is function in the next video on the vertical line test.